Son of God, you are so good, almighty God, and hallowed be your name, and your dominion. Is forevermore, and I don't We worship you, Son of God. You are so good. Almighty God, hallowed be your name, and your dominion is forevermore, and our grave. Is a God, oh, sing with me a grave. Is a God, and oh, sing a grave. And a grave is a God. And you're the name above all names, and you are worthy of our praise. And my heart will sing a praise. Is a God. Amen. 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 Let's close our eyes now and pray. Father, we thank you this morning that you have made this wonderful day for us. As those of us who have joined in from Africa and those who are in Europe, Lord, we are all over the place. Father, we thank you. Right now, as we hear your word, speak to us, minister to us. Let the entrance of your word give us light. Let the revelatory aspects of the word of God, Father, change the negative dynamics in our lives. Pray that the word of God will give us, will strengthen our path. The word of God, the word of God will change negative situations. The word of God will empower and encourage us. Father, let us not give up. Let us not be worried when the word of God corrects us. Let us not be offended when the word of God reproves us. Let us not be, uh, be, be perplexed when the word of God chastises us. Pray that, Father, the double-edged sword of the word of God will speak volumes in our lives this morning. Thank you, because, Lord, we, you have made us so wonderfully and so beautiful. Lord, any burden that came to church this morning, as the word of God is preached, drop that burden in the name of Jesus. Father, lift those burdens from our heads. Every difficulties, every hardness, everything that anyone is going through individually, in our individual lives, in our personal life. Father, let the word of God soften our heart, soften our minds, and soften every hardness in our lives. Let every ligament, every tapers, every tissues, Father, that is in our heart, the heart of our, of our mind. Lord, let them be removed by the word of God. Father, let your word have a, a final say. Yes, others may have their say concerning us, but let the word of God prove us and prove us in the name of Jesus. We thank you. As I minister your word, may I not speak according to my wisdom. May I speak according to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Father, let me demonstrate the power and efficacy of the word of God to your people. But Lord, we will not leave your presence the way we came. 
as Jacob did not leave the pearl the way he entered. Father, but Jacob was transformed. So we pray likewise that, Lord, let, oh God, our presence before you this morning, Lord, uh, bring divine transformation, Lord. Uh, let our lives be transfigured, oh God, uh, from one place to the other. That, Lord, we will see your good works in us. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody shout amen. Oh, somebody shout a victorious amen. Praise amen. the name of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory Jesus, be to God. I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. I know that you are excited to be in the house of the Lord. I welcome you, Sister yes. Petty, Sister Pep, uh, uh, our, our wonderful Royal iPad user. I welcome each and every one of you, our sinner, Lady mm -hmm. Lady, all the way from Cameroon. Oh my goodness, Darlene from Cameroon, Sister Julia. Wow, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Sister Eugenia, Sister Antoinette, Elder Mary, my mama, praise. God, Adolphus, all the way from Ghana, my good friend. God bless you. God bless you for joining us. Brother Oju, you, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Our youth leader, God bless you all for coming in to church this morning. This morning, I am hoping to put the crown on my message. I have been teaching uh, for the past four weeks, and this week, Today, I am trusting God that I'll be able to close the kettle to this chapter because we are going to enter into another series of the Holy Spirit. So I am hoping that by the grace of God, I will be able to comport myself and within the next 30 minutes, I should be able to digest the sermon and finish it off and then glory be unto the name of the Lord. Beloved, we, as children of God, we have so much expectations. Many a times, when we come to the Lord, we ask ourselves questions. Why was it that when I was in the world, I was not encountering these challenges? As soon as I entered into the Lord and I gave myself to the Lord and I became I committed, then problems start coming. I had a testimony of a brother many years ago. He said when he was in the world, he was better off. When he came to church, he was always having uh, problems. Beloved, because of his revelation of that, that truth, as I'm talking to you right now, this brother is still having problems. He's still having problems. Jesus said something very important. He said, when, when he said, children, in this world, you will suffer persecution. Nevertheless, he said, I have overcome the world. He said, greater is he that overcome the world, don't put, uh, put it. Even our faith, every test that you encounter is a necessary tool to help you advance to the next level. May I say that again? Every test, every challenge you encounter is in life is a necessary tool, a necessary tool you need in order for you to advance or move on to the next level of your life. Anytime you see a challenge that faces you, anytime you encounter any difficulties in your life, it is your time of harvest. Anytime you encounter a challenge, know that it is your time of harvest. Why do we study mathematics in school? We study mathematics in order to solve problems. So you see that solve these problems, where the equation is put before you, they say solve the problem and the equation is a problem. The mathematical equation is a problem to be solved and you need the right answer. The challenges of our lives, ladies and gentlemen, is an equation of our lives. The, the, more, the, 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 the best student qualifies. The best student that solves the, the uh, equations of your life uh, reaps the harvest of your life. So we saw that we were in the eighth month. And number eight is the number of new beginning. It is our month. So we were saying it is a month of new beginning. Something is about 
something is cooking. God is cooking something. So we came to the Lord and saying, Lord, this month is a month of preparation for the great harvest. If it is the new beginning, it is a, a, the, the month that is opening the womb for the closing chapters of this year. Praise God. So we need to adjust ourselves and position ourselves and get ourselves ready to receive the great harvest, irrespective of the challenges that are around us. Some of us may have lost our jobs. Some of us may have lost a dear one. Some of us may have lost friends. Some of us have gone through, have had issues with neighbors. Some of us have had so, gone through so many different perils of our individual capacity. But through these all, through all these challenges, I, I want to point to you. I want to paint the pictures of your harvest to you so that you will be resilient, you will be solid, you will sit put, you will not be moved, you will not give up because you are going through the challenge. The challenge, you, challenges you go through in life they strengthen you, they equip you, they make you tough, praise God, they make you tough, they make you tough, they make you so tough that when you grow, when you enter into the, into the, into the world of or, or, or employment world, any different uh, area that you enter into, you are already built to face each and every challenge. Don't forget, but remember that this world uh, you are you only triumph or you are only prosperous based on the challenges that you survive. I cannot try, uh, trust any vision that has not been trusted. I've been telling you this: a vision that has not been trusted cannot be tested. So that is why it is very, 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 very um, um, it's unwise for as a church, as a Christian, to be following. Prophets. Everywhere you go, everywhere you hear a church open, you are there. Everywhere you hear a, a, a prophet, you are following. You everywhere, every man of God that gives you prophetic instruction, they call it, you are following. You are not solid. You are not based on the word of God. You need to settle down. Remember the Bible says that he leaded them in the green pastures. Praise God. God leads you in a green pastures and he settles you. He wants you to be still so that you will eat the grass that he has provided for you, but you cannot locate your place of greener pasture if you are not ready to follow the shepherd. Praise God. Every good shepherd knows where the greener pastures are. And ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you this morning that we have a good shepherd who knows where the greener pastures are located in the field of our lives. If we follow this shepherd, my goodness, sir, you will not be missing. You will not lose out on the good nutrients of the greener pastures that are hidden on the mountains, that are on the left, that are in the eastbound, that are in the westbound. It is only the shepherd that knows where the green, the, the grass is growing very, very well. Ladies and gentlemen, may I submit to you this morning that your finest shepherd in your life is our Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ did not leave us perplexed when he was growing up. He left us a comforter who through him, uh, Jesus, uh, we can approach God boldly and we can have everything and anything that we require of him. So beloved, I want you to be aware that there is a great harvest that you are about to reap. I help you to start, I help you to explain to you, I'm not going to go there, but we've got this on YouTube um, link. We can share it to you later, some of our series. I help you to understand that um, a harvest, what a harvest is, a, ha the, a harvest is the requirement, is the, is the desire for every successful farmer. Every farmer is time for the harvest. And I told you that you cannot reap your harvest until you have sown your seed. I also help you to understand that your seed is not only financial, your seed can be your gifts, your giftings, your talents. Your, 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 what God has implanted in you. Praise the name of the living God. There is something inside of you and that thing is called the seed that has been planted inside of you. So this in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Unto him that doeth a 
abundantly according to the power that worketh in you. So the power, the ability to prosper has already been placed inside of you. You must follow the law, the laws, and the uh, and the provisions that God has set aside so that you will be able to benefit from everything God has in stock for you. Praise God. Hallelujah. We also saw in Genesis chapter 8 how God told Noah for 120 days, rain, pour, 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 pour. God preserved the whole entire family of Noah. And in the end, God preserved the family. God preserved the family of Noah. And uh, God made a covenant. He made a vow. He made a vow. He made a vow. And it, upon this vow, upon this statement that is an ordinance, it's a law that God has made. Upon this statement, I am bringing to you this message. I have been dilating this message from this text in Genesis chapter 8. And then now verse, verse 22. After everything said and that, you know the story. God now made a statement when he saw the heart of Noah, when he saw the, 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 the what Noah had done. Praise God. He said, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. Why are you crying in the winter? When you know that it is not yet time for the harvest. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Your plant is messed up in the in the summer. You can't see uh, in, in, the, in, 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 the, in the autumn. You can't really see the, the growth of what you have planted. It is not yet the season, beloved. The season is the summer. The summertime, at the summertime, you will be able to reap. Don't rush to reap in your sowing times. In your sowing times, you sow. You sow your financial seed, you wait for the harvest. You sow your talents, you wait for the harvest. Those of you who are talented in music, talented in any uh, various, various disciplines, you go, you sit down, and then you learn your trade. You learn your discipline. And you put in every effort. You read your books. Those of you who are in education, you read and you read and you read and you read. You gain, uh, you gain what wisdom. Those of you who are athletics, your 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 strength, your skill is not only seen on the field. Your skill is seen behind the, the field. Your skills is always administered to. Your skills are always ministered to. Your skills are always given attention outside the field. You don't come as a sprinter on the field. You wake up in the morning, boom, and then you come straight and then you go to the field to run. No, you wake up you now. I mean, health, um, 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 uh, the trainers will tell you when you wake up, when you want to go to jogging, you don't just get up and just go jogging. You have to stretch the muscles. The muscles are tight. You need to stretch the muscle. You need to do some stretching. Otherwise, what's going to happen is you're going to have what, muscle cramps whilst you are running. So you need to release the tensions of the muscles. And then you start slow. Even on a treadmill. You go on a treadmill. You do 10 minutes walking. And then you, 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 you put up the momentum. And then you increase to 20. And then you start running. You start running. You are gaining momentum. Before you reach the 30th minute, you are now sweating. You are gaining momentum. You are running. You see, you started from somewhere. Beloved, don't try to harvest in your sowing season. Everything has a time and a season. The book of Ecclesiastes puts it in a very nice way. For everything, there is a season. There is a time to sow and there is a time to reap. There is a time to be born and there is a time to die. Everything has a season. It does not matter the season you are in right now. I want to challenge you, church, I want to challenge you individual, that your season of harvest is just around the corner. You will definitely reap your season. You will reap in the right season. When your season is not right, when the season is not timing, for some of you, uh, you are anxious. You have reached a marital state and you are not yet married. You are anxious. You are worried. Why is it that I am not married? God says, I should tell you, uh, stand back and get ready for the season because you are, I am ushering you into the right season right now. For some of you, you have been 
can't find no job. God says, don't worry about the job. I have worked for you. Praise the name of the living God. Now, God says, I should also tell you that you are in the process of being an unemployable person. You are in the process of being unemployable. The seed inside of you cannot be employed. It cannot be employed. You have been deployed into the world to master your art, to master your skills, to master everything that God has planted inside of you. You are a different breed of species that God has planted inside you. He has granted you this body to take care of the, oh my goodness, my goodness, I feel like I'm talking to somebody right now. Listen to me too. Your body is trapped with a seed planted by God, waiting for the manifestation of the great harvest. Your body is trapped in a seed. Your body is a seed. That is why no two pe pe people have the same DNA. Even twins. You are peculiar. You are unique and you are different. Don't look at what your brothers are doing. Don't look at what others are doing. Stay in your own corner. Praise God. Stay in your own lane. When you're driving on the motorway, they advise you on the on, on the on the information board on, 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 on the bridges. They say, stay in your lane. It is for a reason. Because you don't know what is ahead. Stay in your corner. Don't rush to jump to another person's lane. Stay in your lane. Continue to do what you're doing. What are your seeds? Take care of the seed. Don't allow the seed to, to, to dry out without being planted. Plant the seed. Plant whatever God has planted inside of you. Start manifesting it. Start harvesting it. Start, start taking care of it. Start pruning. Prune your seed. As you plant your seed, prune it. Prune your seed. Take care of the seed that is inside of you. Take care of it by adding value into your life. Reading by getting quality information that will enhance your vision and your purpose. Beloved, the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah, Look at what the word of the Lord says. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says. Daughter Babylon is like a threshing floor. At the time it is trampled. A threshing floor. Like a doormat. Everybody is trashing on. Everybody is working on. At the time it is trampled. But look, 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 look at what it says. The time to harvest her will soon come. Now, this is the word of the Lord. This is <laughs> you see, let me tell you something. And I was telling you when we are praying. Now we need to be really, really careful how we pray. We need to be careful how we pray. Because prayer is not only a conversation, but prayer is a legal word. The word prayer comes from the Hebrew word, which means petition. Greek word, rather, which means petition. You are, it is a legal term. You are petitioning. To petition means to bring to present a case before a judge to, or a lawyer or or, or or a senior advocate. You are presenting some issues onto the Lord. So you are making a petition. It is a legal term. So anytime you make a petition, look at what the Lord he says, his word, his word will not come back to him void unless it has accomplished the purpose for which it was sent. So when you are praying, you are quoting God's word to him. You are telling him what he has inscribed in his word. And he's obligated because you, you are making a petition. He's obligated to follow his, his own law. Remember, Jesus did not come to abolish the law. He came to fulfill it. That's why he didn't, he didn't encounter with um, the Sahindrins and the, uh, and the Sadduc Sadducees their the perspective of their thought or their thinking processes, how they understand that the theological mindset of God. Jesus did not challenge them in the way they think, but he challenged them by telling them the way it is. Because he was the truth. And if you know the truth, only the truth shall set you free. So according to Jeremiah 51 verse 33, God says, you have been trampled on. Yes, it's okay. But the time is coming when you will soon become a harvest. People will harvest your, you. 
they will harvest your talents. People will harvest your giftings. Your workplace, they will start to harvest you. They will have, start to harvest your giftings. Your knowledge, your wisdom will, start, will, will be harvested. Praise the name of the living God. So we look at seven steps to calling in your harvest. Seven steps to calling in your harvest. You said, number one, sow the seed. Don't just leave the seed die. Sow the seed. You must sow the seed. Do not be deceived. God is not more. Whatever a man sows, that shall he reap. Galatians 6, 7. Sow the seed. Don't allow the seed to be anywhere. Just sow it. Some of you procrastinate too, uh, procrastinate too much. You have to go to university. Go. You have to study that course. Study. You have to, you have, you have to change jobs. Change. I told you a, 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 a report came out last week. They said that people who are not happy in their job, they stand the chance of getting early dementia. Why are you perplexed? Why are you worried in the area of your field? Why are you worried? Ask the Lord to give you the direction and he will change the job for you. He will show you what to do so that you'll be happy. Don't wake up. Me, any time I wake up to go to work, I am so excited in my spirit. When the time comes and I'm not happy at the place, I change. Praise the name of the living God. Don't work at an environment. Don't be, don't work at an environment that you are not happy. If you are not happy, speak to the Lord. Maybe God will help you to change the job. Maybe God will help you to go and see the manager. And then you, you can negotiate your way around. Don't go to work unhappy. Don't come and sing in church unhappy. Anything you are doing in church in the house of the Lord, don't do it grudgingly. Don't do it because pastor says you have to come and pray. Don't do it because pastor says you have to come and sing. Don't do it because pastor says, do it as a religious, you're not even a religious uh, 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 study, but you're a spiritual act of God because religion has been misunderstood. I mean, religion is, you know, not uh, the vocabulary of God. God does not speak religion. He speaks to us about his kingdom. So let us talk about whatever you can do in every area of our of life, what you are doing in, 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 uh, to the Lord. You need to do it happily. Don't do it grudgingly when you are giving your tithe, giving your seed, giving sowing into, into the ministry. Whatever it is that you are doing, don't say, oh, we are not in church. No, 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 no. No, do it from your heart. Let it come from the bosom of your heart. And as you do so, I can guarantee you that you are sowing the seed. You are sowing the seed. And the seed will definitely germinate. So sow your seed. Don't, don't invest. Don't uh, 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 bury your seed. Sow it. It's different between sowing and burying. You can bury a seed and not look after it. Nothing will happen. I have so many of them in my garden. Bury your seed. Don't bury your seed, but sow it. And as you sow your seed, you need to water it and take very good care of your seed and wait for the manifestation of the great harvest. That's so powerful. In Genesis chapter 22, we saw what God said. It is promised that while the earth remains, seed time and harvest will not cease. Seed is anything you give. It can be time, it can be money, resources, faith. Faith, do you know faith is seed? Because Jesus said, if you have faith like the most seed, you can say to this mountain, but oh yeah, go. And he shall with he said, without doubt in your mouth, in your heart, the, the word heart there is a it's a Greek word that is used to interpret your mind. Without doubt in your mind, whatever you say in your spirit shall. Uh, shall uh, uh, happen to you. So faith is a seed, hope is a seed, and love is a seed. You cannot claim you love your neighbor if you have not sown the seed of love in you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whomsoever believed in him shall not perish. The word of love is inside of you. It is a seed. So the the word of the word love is not only a virtue, but love is a seed that is planted in you. The most important part of sowing is the heart behind the gift. If it's your, it is your talent, it is your heart. If it is your giftings, it is your heart. If you have to come and sing, it is your heart. If you have to evangelize, it is your heart. If I have to come and preach, it is my heart. Whatever I do with you, whatever you do with me, it is the quality of the content of your heart that makes the difference. In fact, it is the quality of the content of your heart 
that determines the harvest that you will reap. Whatever you do for the Lord is the quality of the content of your heart that determines the harvest that you shall reap. So I am challenging you, church, that get ready for the great harvest. But in preparation for the great harvest, there are certain ligaments, certain elements that we need to uh, look at. We saw number two, get aggressive about your, your harvest. Don't just sow and just leave it. Take care of it. Isaiah 51 verse 1, we saw, come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you without money, come, buy and, and what? And eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Psalm 53. He says, so, the, 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 it's, a book, it's a psalm of David. He says, when he was in the wilderness of Judah, oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsted for thee. Oh my goodness. He says, my flesh longer for thee. Psalm 53, verse 1 and 2. My flesh longer for thee. In the dry and thirsty land, there is no water. Where water is not. Jesus said, I am the well of rock water. He said, if you believe in me, I will give unto you a well sprinkling with living water. If you come to Jesus thirsty, he will give you uncontrollable water. The water of life will be gushing out from every corner of your life. But you need to be aggressive with the seed that you have sown by praying about it, by working towards it, by doing everything, you investing in the gift, investing in the seed, and wait and see what God will do. What God cannot do, no man can do. What a friend cannot do, cannot do for you. If God cannot do for you, your friend cannot do it for you. So that is why it is very, very important that in every emergency situation you have, the first point of contact of your first aid is God. Oh, Lord, show me the way. I need an escape route, oh, Lord. This challenge is too much for me. Father, I need your help. Help me. That is an sure. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is there to help us when we are down. Number three, don't give up on your seed. Don't give up. Beloved, some of you, you are challenging children. Don't give up on them. They are, they are a good seed. They are a good seed. He says, this is the seed that the Lord has blessed. Your job, that you are, the work that you have started, your own business, is a good seed. Don't give up on it. Don't give up on it. Your harvest is determined by what you do while you are waiting for it. Praise the Lord. While you are waiting for the harvest, what are you doing? Are you chasing women? Are you vandalizing? Are you going to, are you doing arm robbery? Are you stealing at work? Are you stealing overtime? Are you stealing time? Praise the name of the living God. Whatever you do in your waiting period, Matters and God is trying to watch it. Listen to me. Listen to me. God does not interfere in your seasons of waiting. <laughs> he doesn't interfere. He allows you to be happy because at the end of the day, you have the right to be happy. Correct? And God is watching you. Your action during your waiting periods determines the quality of your harvest. Try this. He said this confession last week. I am expecting a record-breaking harvest. Say it with your heart. Say it. I am expecting a record-breaking harvest. Some of you are going to give downloading testimonies in the next coming weeks. Only one person said amen because they are next to me. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Now, Hallelujah. keep the weeds. Number four. I didn't mention this last week, but keep the weeds out of your harvest. Galatians 2, verse 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. The word translated keep here, use here means to put a edge of pawns around it, to watch over, to guard, to protect and safeguard. That's the word keep. So keep the weeds out of your harvest, church. When you plant your seed, keep every enemy away from your plantation. 
when a farmer plants seed in a garden, doesn't just walk away and hope for the best. No, he has much to do to protect his crop. And so do you. What can choke your crop spiritually now? I'm bringing my message to a close. Watch me carefully. Walking outside of love. God is love. And you, you say you love God and you are walking away from love. My goodness, you are in danger situation. This includes unforgiveness, bitterness, resentment, strife, hatred. You must walk away from these, these, these limitations. Keep the weeds out of your harvest. Bitterness, anger, frustration. With all of these things, anytime you are anxious, you go into the mode of anxiety and you are res you, you, you have pain or you, uh, you, you have bitterness inside your spirit and this bitterness or unforgiveness is not going, you, you know, it's not, <laughs> this person, I will never forgive them. I will never, because of what they have done and it's really, really, really hurting you. What you are telling God is that God is not capable of bringing peace to your heart. So if you find yourself enshrined in this area of your life where you are facing the spirit of unforgiveness, resentment, bitterness, I don't care who raped you. I don't care who slept with you. I don't care what your father did to you. I don't care what your mother did to you. I don't care who, what, who did what to you. As long as you are holding that bitterness in your spirit, you see, you, you see, you leave the judgment to God to deal with that individual. But you, the person that you want the great others, you need to let go. You need to keep the uh, keep the weeds. You need to keep the weeds out of your harvest. Do you remember when the disciples uh, uh, Jesus gave that parable? He said when they saw the weeds growing along Matthew chapter 13, uh, along with the good seed, the, uh, the thorns are choking the seed. Said, no, 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 no. Leave them alone. Don't try to pluck them out now. For at the time of the harvest, the reapers will be able to gather and take away the thorns among the weeds. In this season, don't be in haste. Praise the, Lord. Praise the Lord. Don't be in haste to rush to what? To pluck out the weeds, the, the thorns. Allow God to deal with it by letting it go. As you allow those pain, those bitterness, those resentments, those, yes, you have been treated badly. You can narrate yourself. Your, your, the, first, the first person, the finest friend, you can tell your side of the story to the Holy Spirit. And many of us, we have made the Holy Spirit redundant, number one. We have made the Holy Spirit unemployable, number two. Number three, we have castigated the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We have sidelined the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So the, the Holy Spirit is watching us doing things. We plan evil and we administer them. We go ahead and do what we want without the involvement of the Holy Spirit. Remember what he said in the, in the book of Revelation? He said, I stand at the door and I knock. Any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. I will stop with him. I will dine with him. I will eat your kegali with him. I will eat a bar with him. I will eat jollof rice with him. And he shall be my people and I shall be your God. Beloved, open the door of your heart and allow the Holy Spirit to enter. He will help you. He will guide you. He will lead you. And you will not go astray in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase. You see? So the number one prerequisite for your increase is praising the Lord. Wake up in the morning, you are happy, you are sad praising. Thank him. Thank him for everything. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all, all that is within me. You see, if you allow your liver to praise God, can you imagine that your liver will be dysfunctioning? He said, all that is within me. If you allow your heart to praise God, your heart cannot, cannot have 
computation. I pray against any power of heart computations in, in the name of Jesus. Those who are having breathlessness, I release your, your nostrils. I release air in your nostrils. I release the fresh breath breath of Christ inside your spirit right now. Those who are suffering from, 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 from immune deficiencies, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that your immune system shall receive divine touch right now in the mighty name of Jesus. You are a farmer. You have the seed. You sow it, sow it well. Know that there's a day of harvest. And in a waiting period, you need to take care of the, plant, the seed that you have, because it's going to shoot up. The blades are going to shoot up. It's going to burn. It's going to start you know, blossoming. You need to water it. You need to take care of it. You need to look at the, the sunlight that the seed is going to receive. You need to take care of this. The same is true of the seed we sow. It needs to be watered, but with what? Praise and thanksgiving. I don't care what's going in everything, the Bible says, in everything with what? Prayer and thanksgiving. Let your supplication be known unto God. The language of faith. Throughout the Bible, we see praise and thanksgiving associated with a rest, resulting harvest. David danced until his wife was jealous for because the other concubines were looking at David's nakedness. He danced until his clothes came up of him. Why? Because he understood. David had prayed. David had fasted. David had given. David had done everything. But when the time came for him to praise the Lord, why? Because the ark was recaptured from the hands of the enemy and brought into the house of the Lord. David danced uh, and his clothes uh, came off him. Uh, I present to you the ark of the Lord in your heart this morning. Uh, as you praise the Lord, uh, as you worship him, uh, as you bow before him, uh, as you shabbat him, uh, as you lift him high, uh, I challenge you, my brothers and my sisters, uh, that the ark of God shall come back onto your heart. Uh, the presence of God uh, shall come back into your, into your life. And guess what? When the presence of God is with you, do you remember when you were a child and somebody wants to beat you and you run away and then you go and stand next to an adult? That person running to beat you, they go away because you have sought refuge from a bigger person. That is what the Holy Spirit will do for you. As you are running, don't run away from the Holy Spirit. Please run towards the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit help you to deal with those situations. Last week we saw, put the sickle for your harvest. Put in the sickle for the harvest. The sickle is the machinery or the equipment you need for the harvest. And I'll show you the picture of it. And I told you how the sickle for the harvest is the word of God. Because the word of God is two edged sword. The word of God is two edged sword. You need to apply the principles of faith. For the word of God is alive. Hebrews 4, 12 says, the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than any two edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joints and marrow. The word spirit used there is the tripartite of man, which is the spiritual aspect of man, not the Holy Spirit. There is a spirit of God in man, not, that is the Holy Spirit, that teaches you, it shows you which way you should go. So your spirit is made up of your spirit and the spirit of God. Uh, you, so <laughs> your spirit leaves your body. At a time when the body has finished its work here, the spirit leaves, leaves your body. But this, that spirit, if the spirit has been born again, that spirit now has eternal life. It's the name of the Lord. Your body doesn't go to uh, go anywhere. It is the time of the end of the uh, tribulation when those who are dead in Christ shall be raptured, and those who are alive they shall be caught up, and they shall we shall have eternity with the Lord. So your spirit man is born again, not your body. May I say that again? At rebirth, it is your spirit that gets get born again. That's why you are born again, but you are still sinning. That's why the grace is, is there. Let me tell you this. Let me make this statement. Grace is not grace is not there for you to continue to sin. Shall we continue to sin that grace 
be abound? Be abound. No. This is not made available for us to continue presumptuous sins. Some of us, we plan sin. And some of us, we enter into sin. It's two different things. Those who plan sin, hey, careful, we pray for God to help us. So we don't plan sin. When we plan sin, we are preconceived. It. When you go to court, the judge will find out whether this, uh, it would determine whether it is a preconceived thought or idea that led to you committing that offense. And that has a very, very long way in the decision making of the judge. The last one, number seven, and I close with this. Command your harvest. Come. In James chapter 4, verse 5, verse 4, the Bible reads, Behold, the high or the harvest of the laborers who have ripped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, cries, and the cries of them which have reaped the harvest are entered into the ears of the Lord of Saboas, the King James Version, the Lord of Saboas, meaning the Lord of hosts, James chapter 4, chapter 5, verse 4. Command your harvest. When your harvest is ready, it will cry out for its rightful order. How do you command it to come in? Cry out to the Lord for your harvest. Now, to cry does not mean to whine or act pitifully. Or not wine, uh, as I use the word as a, 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 a apple, the word wind, wind, W H I N E, wind or wine. You don't whine or you don't show yourself pitiful, but you are crying by faith. It means to proclaim. Praise the name of the living God. You proclaim and determine immediate action with aggression, aggressive force, and passion. It means you cry out and say, Satan, in the name of Jesus, release my harvest. And angels go gather it up now for me. Now, it has been time, it's far, time is far spent uh, that you have been sitting silent uh, and your harvest season comes uh, and you don't reap your harvest. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you that Jesus said that, that the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence and the harvest taken it by force. It was you that sowed. It was you that planted the seed. It was you that watched the wind, the direction of the wind. It was you that protected the bounds. It was you that covered your seed. It was you under the rain, and the rain was, was raining and pouring on you. It was you that was bitten by the sun. You were scratched by the sun. The plants of the sea. Right? It was you that was driving away the, the, the snake from the field. It was you that was driving away the bad from coming to eat up your field. It was you that was taking away, that was protecting your field from slaps, from snails, from coming to eat the early plants that shoot up from the earth. It was you that took care of your talent. It was you that took care of your it was you that took care of your plan. It was you that took care of your gifting. It was you that harnessed your gifting. It was you that harnessed your talent. It was you that kept it safe. It was you that did all that you did. That woke up in the morning. That woke up very early in the morning. It was you that put your feet in the water and you were studying to read that. It was you that were engaging that. You wanted that promotion that. You did that course. You did that study. It was you that suffered during the time of the season, of the season, of the season that you, uh, of the season that you were waiting, and you have waited patiently. Now I speak prophetically to you, uh, church, child of God. Uh, you have waited for far too long. Uh, your harvest season has come. Uh, you need to command the harvest. Uh, you need to command your harvest uh, by the seed of expectation. Uh, you stand on your feet uh, and you command the harvest. Uh, you say, hey, can you tell me of my family, you cannot break my family with disease. HIV cannot stay in my family. I bind you in the name of Jesus. Hey, you sickness, you meningitis. I break you for my family. You spirit of black clot. I bind you. You can't stop 
powers. You cast your spirit up. I release you from my family. I release you from my body. Because the word of God declares, and suffer. Uh, do not touch my body. Uh, because I bear in my body uh, the box of the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord of the faith. Uh, come not to any man that has the mark uh, of the Lord. Uh, because I carry the mark of the Lord. Uh, you can't touch me. Uh, my harvest is due. Uh, my time is due. Uh, my time is ripe. Uh, I shall triumph uh, the church of living vine. Uh, we shall enter into our own premises. Uh, we shall have our own property. Uh, we shall have our own services. Uh, God will gather the people back together to see the children that are lost. Uh, those who are lost. Uh, the sheep that are gone astray. Uh, those who are backslidden. Uh, God will gather them one more time. Uh, we shall meet again. Uh, our season of harvest has come. Amen. Church, I don't know what you have been trusting the Lord for. Uh, in this season of expectation, I need you to be very, very expectant. I don't want you to give up on anything. I don't want you to give up on anything that you are trusting God for. You can lose everything. The devil cannot touch your seed. Your seed of expectation. Don't let the devil touch it. What you want God to do for you. In fact, the Lord said, I should announce to somebody that the devil may have tried you, but he couldn't touch your harvest. You shall reap your harvest. I said, you shall reap your harvest. Amen. I said, you shall reap your harvest. Amen. I said, you shall reap your harvest. Amen. Some children will graduate from school. Amen. You shall get that good job. Amen. Your business will thrive. Amen. Your business shall be patronized. Amen. Your ideas shall come to pass. Amen. Your dreams Amen. and your vision shall be manifested. Amen. The things you want God to do for you, it shall Amen. come to pass. You are struggling. You are going out. Running up about the train, mm. and I, I pray for somebody this morning that you mm. shall not give up your faith, you shall not Amen. give up your faith, you shall Amen. not give up your faith because Amen. Hope, uh, faith without work is dead. I need to build that faith of God inside of you because the word of God says, You can see a tree behind my back. He says, Even the tree has hope, according to the book of Job. It's a passport again. I speak prophetically to somebody's spirit right now. This one is under the sound of my voice, over the sight of my reach. I speak to you this morning that your other season is you. I don't know what you are expecting God for, but the Bible says that the expectation shall not be cancelled. I don't know how. Hallelujah. But I want the season of the harvest. Get ready. Get yourself ready. Get yourself ready. Mm -hmm. Change the process of that. Amen. Come by and see. Oh God. Amen. God bless. Amen. Follow the word of God. And make all the difference now. This morning, the word has fallen. I bring a petition before you based on the word message that you have come to me by the Spirit of the Lord. Preach. May your word not fall to the ground. Amen. I caught you, Lord, by your word. Because you are a God of eternity. The word will not come back to you for it. Right. Shall be accomplished. Therefore, those who are sick, kill them. Those who are perplexed, touch them. Amen. But those who are expecting a miracle, even after bank holiday, Lord, let there be a miracle. Amen. Those who are hoping for relocation in our workplace, Father, let everything go. Those who are trusting you for immigration status, Lord, 
Necessary result as we wait patiently yeah. and protect our seed. We thank you for your word. Mm. Thank you for speaking to us. Mm. That Lord, the enemy will not come and take what we have sown in our spirit this morning. And Lord, let your word go right inside our spirit. Mm. As we continue to feed it. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, and amen. 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 Like a week say, I am strong. Somebody say, I am strong. I am strong. I am strong. Someone yes. shout the victorious amen. 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 There are people in church today that few years ago the devil tried them. But we all stood together in hope and expectation, and the Lord vindicated them. The Lord mm. saw them through. I can tell you that you too, the Lord, God will not abandon you. Amen. And God will not abandon you. Amen. I don't know what your expectations are, mm. but I believe God that God will not abandon you. But Amen. don't say, God, he slays me. I will trust him. Mm. Don't trust everybody. But do not fail. Amen. 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 I'll leave you to take the um, offering and then you can proceed. Amen. Amen. Offering time. Blessing time. Amen. Amen. Um, it's time for us to give an offering. Usually it goes on the chat plate, but I don't know how to do it, Pastor. It's okay, it's okay. I'm, I'm, most of us have it, so... Okay, okay. So if you have your offering, just transfer it, and then we'll have a prayer, a word of prayer. Amen. Oh, um, um, I don't know if Brother Oju or someone will give us a song whilst we take our offering. So, Osina, Uju, um, Sister Ruth, Eugenia, anybody home? You Amen. Can Amen. Amen. We give glory to the Lord. He reigns. We give glory to the Lord. He reigns.